Um, Martin? Yeah? Have you been a good boy this year? I've been a reasonably good boy, Dora, I think. I'm not interested, though. Hello and welcome to Pleased to Meet You, A Very Dora Christmas. I'm Martin Kellner and over the next half hour I'll be renewing an acquaintance with Dora Dale. Uh, Dora is a veteran of the theatre and the cinema and will be reviving memories of people that she's either worked with at this festive time of the year or just simply been with. Very much so. Yes. And uh, you've brought in with you, Dora, have you not, a collection of gramophone records yeah, yeah, and yeah. CDs I, and MP3s? Perhaps what a, a, a lesser sort of programme might refer to as a bulging sack in yes. some sort of attempted an anatomical double entendre. But thank goodness we don't go in for that sort of thing. No, we've just got a, a throbbing package of, of goodies. For Excellent. Everyone. Good, and uh, what's the first one you've brought in, Dora? Well, it, we're just going to have a tiny snatch of Noddy Holdout. So here it is, Merry Christmas Everybody's having fun It's me Now, that was a big hit for Slade, not just in the 1970s when it came out, but again through the 80s, the 90s, and even uh, these days. It's still constantly played. And I think it's a big hit because of the effort mm. that went into it. And I'm yes. very glad that the clip you played there had that bit at the end when Noddy shouts, It's Christmas! Because I was there in the studio when yes, they recorded that, so. and he really went for it, mm. Noddy. He really went for that. Uh, and in fact, it, on that take that they used as he belted out it's Christmas so hard he suffered a prolapse as he did that which it looked like a foot long sea anemone an and really? it took him a week to suck oh. it back in Ooh. and he, he had to carry it around in his hand and he told people he was holding a blancmange for charity yes which you know. he did, well, he did a lot of work for charity. He did. It'd be, I don't think he ever actually held a blancmange. No. It was actually just a, a phenomenal yes. uh, prolapse. I'm not sure anybody ever has held a blancmange as such for charity. But you can't hold them for long. No. Uh, I discovered this with Cliff Richard. Yes. Well, we're going to talk, Cliff, uh, a little bit later on, probably. Mm. Now, here's something that's a bit of a Christmas standard, but this is a slightly different version of it. The song's called Yes, Virginia, There Is a Santa Claus, and this version's by Derek Jameson. A oh, wonderful man, family man. And of course, his show with Ellen Jameson mm. on Radio 2 was a really exceptional listen. How sad the world would be if there were no Santa Claus. It would be as sad as if there were no little girls. There would be no childlike faith, no poetry, no beauty to make bearable this existence. We should have no enjoyment except in what we feel and see. The eternal light with which children fill the world would be put out. Not believe in Santa Claus? You might as well not believe in angels. Did you ever see fairies dancing on the lawn? Of course not. But that's no proof they're not there. Nobody sees Santa Claus. But that doesn't mean there is no Santa Claus. But of course I did, actually. I did see fairies dancing on the lawn uh, when I ate Ellen Jameson's magic mushroom quiche uh, at their house in Serpentum. Mm. Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. And Virginia, in ten years' time or so, I may have a spot for you in one of my <laughs> newspapers. Yes, because he used to do, do the pictures of the topless girls, didn't he? He pioneered first one to that, do it. Yeah, He did, yes, yeah. he did. Beginning to look a lot like Christmas Everywhere you go Take a look in the five and ten Glistening once again With candy canes and silver lanes aglow It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas Toys in every store 
But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be on your own front door. So Perry Como, who did quite a few Christmas albums uh, over the years, and as you say, what was uh, a regular fixture on the TV that ran about Christmas time. That's right. Now, uh, did you know he used to be a hairdresser? I did. They used to call him the singing barber. Yeah. Yes. You know um, the blue-coloured water that they put combs in? Yes, in, in, in the old days. They used to do that in hairdressers' shops and barbers, didn't they? He would change that water all the time. Yeah. And he'd sometimes just drink a mouthful or two between customers. And um, he developed... Well, he, he told me... This is when he was a, a hairdresser. He developed some intimate flaking. Right. And... Uh, his friend, uh, the songwriter, Meredith Wilson, mm. asked him, he, he said, what do you think it is, this intimate flaking? Yes. And Perry Como said, well, it's beginning to look a lot like her piece. And Meredith wrote a wonderful song about it. And that was in is 1942. It? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. herpes. Uh, oh, well, no, right, then they tweaked they it in tweaked 1951 it right. and released a record. Yeah. Um, but it was a very, it was a very scratchy recording. Mm. I mean, well, Perry Como himself was he was picking, one. He was picking record, constantly record, through the recording. Yeah. Well, there's a story about Perry Como that uh, a lot of people don't know. Yeah. What a lovely story. Here's another one of those novelty Christmas records, Dora. Oh, good. Yes, this is uh, the, the guy. He was an all-in wrestler, uh, Giant Haystacks. Ah, yes. We well, see now. I knew him when he was Small Hayrick. Mm. Uh, he was prodigiously strong. Prodigiously, and of course, you had to be to to wrestle. Well, this is. I mean, I didn't. I wasn't really interested in any of that. Um, I'd heard rumours about him, and I went. Uh, I was older than him, but I went on a date. Mm. with him um, and he, he came round uh, and he fixed my subsidence just leant on the wall uh, before he picked me up fantastic uh, and when I say picked me up he literally he flung me over St Paul's Cathedral really well, uh, I think you might have exaggerated that story, Dora. I'm having bit, fun. I'm yes. having. I'm riffing so on an idea. On it's it, sort yes. of you take a concept, you know, and you just jazz on it, and then you know, hopefully, some magic comes out. Yes, that the kids will love listening to it at home. I'm if sure they the don't kids... love it, that's cool too, you know. Okay, well, let's hear the song. Uh, this is uh, Giant Haystacks. It's okay for Santa. Dear Haystacks, I know you always wanted to help me deliver presents. Now find a way. Many houses don't have chimneys anymore. So we use the front door. Even you'll fit them. Happy Christmas, Santa. Ho ho! Hey, 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 gather around. It's, it really is Christmas. The best day daily. The fun is for you. It's big as a haystack. But now that's no setback. And Santa Claus makes your wishes come true. And Santa Claus makes your wishes. Come true. Happy Christmas, everybody. Happy Christmas. Oh. That's Janet Haystacks, and it's OK for Santa, one of those novelty songs that were very popular back in the 1980s, early 80s. He sounds a bit yeah. gloomy there, and he was gloomy, very unhappy was man. He? Well, the trouble is, he would destroy everything he touched. Mm. He just, he was that strong. You know, he talked about using front doors there. Well, if he used the front, he would have just smashed it into matchwood. Yes. Yes. Uh, he, he couldn't. Uh, he couldn't drink from a glass, Martin. No. It would just shatter between his fingers. He couldn't use his hands for anything. No. Ever. I remember the the tragedy of his wedding night. Yes. Out through the top of her skull, through the headboard, through the wall, into the next room, and then the bed itself went down through four floors into the hotel basement. Goodness me! Nine injured, four dead. Yes. Tragic. In the end. Yes. Uh, he lived in a cave and he, he just he had to on all fours he had to eat like a pig out of a trough are you riffing again I'm riff it's jazz I'm just <laughs> you're I'm scatting riffing, aren't you? I'm scatting Martin yes. I'm just riffing case, on a concept yeah because he, he, he it's all in fun of course it is he is a much lower was a much lower he's no longer with us sadly sadly but well because yes, of yes I know. know well he was a much loved character so I uh, just want to make it clear that you are riffing I'm uh, completely is, you know is, is it jocularity I'm having it's joshing it's banter it's badinage badinage it's horseplay I'm Good. sporting with an idea banter banter 
Mm. Yeah. Well, Bant is very similar to badinage, actually. Bant, well, I think, yes. legally... Is there a difference? Banter is stronger than badinage. Is it? Well, we'll leave that one uh, hanging there, shall we, Dora? Yeah. As we press on. <laughs> I'm bunk, 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 come here and bunk, 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 out, bunk, 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 I'm coming to, to, I want the world to know I've got to let it go I'm coming, I'm coming <coughs> Sorry, it's Christmas, isn't it? Really? It is. Yeah. Now, you've brought in a Christmas song, Dora, by uh, Paul McCartney. Uh, Paul McCartney, iconic figure, obviously, in the Beatles all those years ago and now. Obviously. Uh, he was very obvious in the Beatles. He was, wasn't he? You could tell. There was only four of them. He was right at the front most of the time. Most of the time he was. Because, yeah. I mean, you perform at the same time as they were performing in, in Hamburg. You were at the Bang Bang Club, weren't you, in Hamburg? You, you did an act there, as I recall. I did. I mean, it, it, was, it was only one bang. But it was a hell of a bang. Yes. Uh, I would. Have you? Did you? Do you know how inflammable corn flour is? I didn't know. If if you can suspend it in midair in some yeah. way, perhaps by a, a sudden gust of warm air, mm. it blows the corn flour up into a little cloud, which you can then ignite. Wow! A tremendously explosive effect. Yeah. Uh, and my act sort of involved some of that and yes. uh, a stool. So yes, I did form form a friendship with him. Uh, Paul McCartney, of course. He's got a beautiful oh, touch. Yeah. Should we hear his Christmas song? Yes, this is uh, Paul McCartney in Wonderful Christmas Time. The mood is right. The spirit's up. We're here tonight, and that's enough. This is Pleased to Meet You, a very Dora Christmas, and this is Martin Kellner wishing you a very happy Christmas if you're listening to this uh, live, and if you're listening to it at some other time of the year, having illegally hijacked the audio from the BBC website and Bluetoothed it to your friends, thank you for going to all the trouble. Really not worth it. Well, here's something, a real curiosity for you now, Dora. Uh, this goes back to 1937. STFU, Martin. Whatever, yes. All the way back to 1937. It's a chap called George Van Dusen, who was known as the Yiddish Yodeler. Mm. Um, shall we hear a little bit of it? Do it. <laughs> Together again we meet To see my dear old pals again It surely is a treat I've made this jolly party boy So what more can I do? I'll keep the music going And I'll leave the rest to you So do as you please Up with your knees It's party time again A drink and a dance I'll know you're at door Whether you're 20 or 74 Finish your gloom Just round the room Never mind the strain So do as you please And up with your knees It's party time again <laughs> Can you get that on iTunes? I'm not sure. Uh, George Van Dusen, uh, the Yiddish yodeler. Mm. Uh, but of course he loved parties and he loved uh, knees up. He did. He mentions it in the song, put your knees up. Put your, put your knees up, which was a great sort of cockney tradition, mm. with the knees yeah, up, so. knees up Mother Brown. We've sort of lost the meaning, the etymology of that. Yes. Um, but putting your knees up, uh, of course, in those days meant putting your knees up to the height of someone's nose crushing the nasal bone and the maxilla with the fullest force possible until the blood streams freely out they're flowing like pasuk wine well there was a lot of uh, sort of unnecessary violence in in those songs you say unnecessary i do that's your word martin my interpretation well but i mean not just that but knees up mother brown you mentioned there yeah uh, knees up knees up never get the freeze up Put your knees up or I'll knock you. Go, I'll stab your tribes you. out. Well, what, yeah, that sort of thing. But yeah, because it's, it's a great uh, tradition, it's a tradition yeah. of, of uh, re what we call recreational violence. Uh, and and what is wrong with that? You often see uh, men in a pub, I think, uh, at sort of closing time, and when it becomes apparent that they're not going to be able to kiss and cuddle a lovely lady, no, right, that that opportunity has gone. Uh, you still want some kind of physical intimacy, and that will very often manifest itself in the form of a fight. Yes. Uh, two men drunkenly 
just holding each other more than fighting each other just endlessly almost waltzing around together yes that's right saying I'm uh, uh, and, and then a the little crowd gonna, will yeah. gather and sort of leave him he's it's not like the it. first dance at a wedding yes it is it's, it's rather lovely I think yes and, and it's a tradition that goes way back obviously and George Van Dusen there uh, was singing about it a lovely, right. lovely song and you can still see that tradition being handed down from generation to generation in pubs like the Rat and Gaffer in Catford mm. Now, Martin, uh, Christmas is always such a jolly time, except for people who live alone and haven't found love uh, and are friendless and are homeless uh, or are very ill. Apart from that, Apart you know, from it's that, a very yes. jolly time. It's a lovely time. Uh, but it? I do think it's worth thinking about people less fortunate than us at this time. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, people who, I don't know, for example, uh, can't muster a single punchline for their entire Christmas single. Uh, unless you count the line, I'm in Dennis the Menace's fan club. Yes. And I'm talking about the Cranky. Ian, I can't wait for Christmas. It's going to be fun. Gonna be dozy. What do you think you'll get this year, Joe? Oh, I think I'll get a new bike, a space invader, not forgetting my Beano annual. I still like the Beano. What? I'm in Dennis the Menace's fan club. So to start well. It was a curious duo because there was... Well, they were a married couple, I believe. The, the, well, that's right. Yes. And uh, the the little boy... Was the the yeah. wife. Yeah. Jeanette Cranky. Jeanette. That's short for genetic mutation. Let me give you a hypothetical Please scenario. Yeah. Imagine if you were in a play yeah. as a man mm-hmm. and playing a man mm-hmm. and you had a romantic interest in the play... And if the the woman was being played by a young boy, mm. would you do all the kissing scene and that? Well, uh, I usually make a rule that I will only do something that's artistically necessary to the plot. And if it were artistically necessary, I suppose I would. Mm. Because, of course, Martin, it, it wasn't always that way around that you had grown women playing young boys. Sometimes you had young boys playing grown women on mm. the stage, didn't you? Well, in Shakespeare's day, yes. That's right. And that's why I think it's it's such a good job, really, that Shakespeare didn't write, say, Basic Instinct. Yes. Which would have been much trickier and I think probably a lot less defensible. Now, it's a great tradition at Christmas time, uh, Dora, these round robin letters. <sighs> Aren't they wonderful? Yes, this is where people tell you what they've been doing through the year. And it's always fascinating. It's like hearing about someone's dream or talking about football. Endlessly fascinating. Endlessly. And I've got a couple here, actually. Oh, right. Let's have um, a listen to this. I've had in Christmas cards. Here's one. Now, this is from... Uh, oh, uh, the Cleggs. The Cleggs. Yeah, uh, Nick Clegg. Mm. Uh, now, he says... <clears throat> This year, I've been prioritising dropping vowels from words whenever there's two of them together after an R, while my wife from Spain has been prioritising being creative, doing up our half of the bedroom in number 10 in a beautiful Spanish villa style. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. David Cameron says he doesn't like it and claims I've been taking up more than my half of the Tyrac. I told him I have always opposed the occupation of Tyrac, but you know what David's like, lol. The yes. biggest fight came when we had to decide who got which side of the bed. David said he favours the right. And so it turns out, do I. Mm. Anyway, keep it real. Yes, I didn't realise they actually lived together in number 10. Yeah, they complete share the whole place. Wow. Uh, it's a night, apparently um, the That's, fridge is a big issue. Yeah. It's a sitcom waiting to happen, isn't it, really? <laughs> but I've done all the jokes right now. Yes. Now, Dora, we're going to do something a little bit different here because yeah. we're going, you're going to play disc <laughs> jockey. Because what we're going to do is a chart rundown. So these, are, uh, yeah, yes, these are not particularly people that you you've met over the years, or you have met some of them. Yeah. Uh, what we're doing is a top ten, and we're going. I'm going to show you how to do a rundown, yep. in, very much like Tony Blackburn and Alan Freeman and all those legendary DJs. Yeah. Um, or David the Kid Jensen. All those people. In the latter days of... Yes. Right. 
all those people so we're going to show so what shall i just read it out now no you see you don't do it like that we have to build the tension up Um, i just i'll tell you at number one no 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 please you never start with number we start at number 10 so and then you say at number 10 and then in comes the music and uh and then where do i go if i've done the last one then well when you've done the the best one first no, 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 no. You do the number 10 and then you go down to number 9, number 8, number 7. And, and Do I have to do it all backwards? You do the whole thing backwards, Dora. So, um, okay. yeah, and then when you say it, the, the piece of music comes in. So start, and what we're going to do is we're going to do half the chart run down. So from numbers 10 One to 6. To five. No, 10 to 6. We'll do those. Is it 10 to 6? We'll do those now, yeah. and then in the second part of our Christmas special, we'll do we'll numbers, do, we'll, we'll do numbers uh, five up to we number do, one. Why, why and do number we do, one will be the big part climax. One, we do, right. So, here we go then. I should probably write this all out again then, because I've got number one. Yeah. Yeah. No, go on. I'll so, all I'll you go. need to say now is at number 10. It's Wham! Is that right? That's more and or less. It, it's Wham! At number 10. It's Wham. At number 10. It's Wham. And last Andrew, Christmas. No. Andrew Lloyd. Andrew Lloyd, Lloyd Ridgely. Ridgely. Lord Andrew Lord Ridgely. Andrew Ridgely. Lord Andrew Lloyd Ridgely. Yes. So he was the real musical talent. He ended up singing Smack My Bitch Up with the Prodigy. And at number, number nine. nine. The Pogues featuring Kirsty McCall, Fairy Tale of New York, a lovely song based on contempt and hatred. No wonder it's so popular, Kim. There was Christmas Eve, At number eight. eight. No, no, I'll do that. Down. Okay. At number eight. Wizard, I wish it could be Christmas every day, and if you've seen that performance on top of the props too, you can see he's lying through his teeth. Here's the true fact for you, he had a semi-tame starling that lived in his beard. At number... Oh, sorry, go on. Yes, what yeah. number are we up to? I've forgotten now. Well, yeah. I mean, for me, it's number three. Yes. It's number four. Number it's six. Number seven, then. At number seven, seven do I say? Yeah. Yes. At number seven. Band Aid. I love the line in this song that says, Tonight, thank God it's them instead of you. It's a lovely sentiment. <laughs> Cheers, God, for dumping that one on someone else. Keep up the good work, big fella. At number no, six. Sorry. Yes, uh, the, at number six. It's the Ronettes and Sleigh Ride. Phil Spector, he's having a quiet Christmas this year in his wing. At number five. Okay. Stop the Cavalry. Jonah Louie. His real name, of course, was Jonah Lomo, uh, which he then changed to Joanna Lumley and had to change it again for obvious reasons. <laughs> And so at number five, no. No, we don't do that. That's tomorrow at right. number five. Or later today if you're listening uh, yeah. in one big chunk. Or indeed if you've got it on an iPod or something. And this day and age, what it. does time mean? Precisely. That's the five right. from ten to... The big fi- do you know no, this that could be the most... Five. That was six. That was six. But I mean, what I mean was at the top. Well, the bottom five. The top ten, but really... The bottom five the bottom, from the top ten. Arguably. Arguably, yes. Uh, so it's, that, that could be the most confusing yeah. chart ever. That was Dora. good. That was mm. a good chart. It was. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow or, or later, later, we'll do five to through to one. Ten, one to one. So what's the next one you brought in for us, Dora? Well, this is a perennial Christmas favourite. Mm. It's Bing Crosby and David Bowie, or if you prefer, Bowie. He's on earth. Can it be? Years from now, perhaps we'll see our the day of glory. See the day of living peace. So So, uh, Bing Crosby and uh, David Bowie, stroke Bowie, mm. uh, there with uh, Peace on Earth. 
Yes, and uh, uh, it's very cool. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard Adam Buxton or Joe Cornish doing an impression of David Bowie, uh, and they, they it's it's very harsh and reductive. Uh, they simply go was a was a was a was, and they think that's a perfectly adequate impression of David. Bowie. And it, he's actually a much more complex uh, vocally than that. Uh, he he, I would say a better impression would be this was a was a was a was oh. Yes, very, very good. The thing is that Bing Crosby flew into a rage after that recording and he tried to bury it. He wanted it pulled from the TV special. He was furious. Um, he, was, he, he was saying, um, he was saying, well, you, you, got, you got David Bowie. He spoke very much like that. Yes. It wasn't as low no. in real life. Oh, you got, you got David Bowie there singing about peace on earth and I'm the jerk in the corner going parappa bum bum. Yeah. I mean, what's people going to remember? The, the guy singing about peace and goodwill to all men or the jerk off in the corner there going parappa frickin' bum bum. I look like a putz here. I look like some kind of an idiot. I look like an asshole. What's the deal? You got to bury it. I can't look like this. Think of my back catalog. Parappa frickin' bum bum. Who the frick thinks Parappa frickin' bum bum here? Yeah. You got me looking like a joint off. That's right. He was very angry. Well, he was. I've never heard Bing Crosby as angry as that. I'm walking. I'm walking here. I'm not doing the show. I'm walking. Yeah. Sure, uh, very furious. And I was impressed, Dora, as to how you managed to recreate that anger. It took a lot out of me. Wow. It has done. Oh, no, it really did. Yeah, I can oh. see. <laughs> I am so sorry. So, Dora, we've heard lots of other people's music during yeah. this programme. Uh, now we're going to... Rubbish, yes. Now we're going to hear some of your own music. Yeah, well, yes, I mean, that's, that's a generous term. Mm. I, I thought if I do a Christmas song, everyone else does. Everyone else does, I'm why not? I'm set for life. Mm. But, you know, mm. I can retire on this one. Because once you've uh, written a Christmas song, it comes round year after year, doesn't it? Of course it, it does. Mm. This will become an evergreen favourite. I'm sure it will. Right up there with... The Millennium Prayer by mm, Cliff Richard. Indeed. Ready? I'm ready. Christmas is a coming, the choir boys are humming, and drummer boys are drumming just for you. I like the merry meetings, filled with seasons sleetings, but in between the greetings there is something I must do. I need a little me time at Christmas I need a little time to myself I'm knocking back the sherry Cause I need to put the me in merry Sod off prancer, sod off dancer, sod off elf I need a little me time at Christmas I need a little time to unwind I do it in the shower, but Granny's been there for an hour And it's hard to shift that image from your mind I need a little me time at Christmas I need it for my psychological health I need about 20 minutes That's more than long enough in it So give me 20 minutes to myself I think we understand each other Give me 20 minutes to myself Merry Christmas. Oh, beautiful, Dora. Beautiful. What a lovely way to finish. Well, I do wish we had time for some more of Dora Dale's memories. You've been listening Quite to... Quite fancy a drink. Pleased to meet you. A very... Yes. With a, I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. You've been listening yeah. to Pleased to Meet You, a very, very Dora, Dora Christmas, Christmas with Dora, Dora Dale and me, Martin Kellner. Thank you very much right. indeed for listening Come and on. happy Christmas. Let's go. Let's go. Pleased to meet you, A Very Dora Christmas was written, produced and performed by Martin Kellner and Jake Yap and is a BBC Radio Leeds original production.